following repeated calls and growing civil unrest. The prime minister of Haiti is agreeing to step down from his role as leader once a transitional council has been appointed. Violence began ramping up on the streets of Haiti late last month. Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced he would resign just hours after officials, including Caribbean leaders and Canada's UN ambassador Bob Ray, met in Jamaica for emergency meetings. Haiti declared a state of emergency earlier this month. Gangs have burned police stations, closed the airports, and raided two of the country's biggest prisons, releasing 4,000 inmates. The U.S. began evacuating its embassy this weekend. Meanwhile, the Canadian embassy in Port-au-Prince remains temporarily closed to the public. Consular services, though, are being provided remotely. Bob Ray is a Canadian ambassador to the United Nations. He was part of those critical talks yesterday in Jamaica and joins us now. Thank you for being with us, Ambassador. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. So the situation in Haiti is deteriorating quickly. Can you talk to us about what it's like on the ground there that's of concern for officials in Canada, too, and if that instability poses a risk to the region? Well, I mean, I think the situation in, in Haiti has, has been bad for, for a long time in terms of gang activity, um, kidnapping, murders, um, and the, the gangs effectively taking over large parts of the, the capital city of Port-au-Prince, which is where a very large part of the Haitian population lives. So um, we've been working behind the scenes mainly, but doing everything we can to encourage the political parties to come to an agreement about a transition government that would allow us to move to an election. Your listeners will remember that uh, the president of the country was assassinated three months ago, three years ago, and that we, we Prime Minister Henri has been carrying on. But we, I think that there was a feeling among the other parties that there needed to be a, a broader cross-party coalition that would take the country into an election. And Mr. Henry has agreed to that, and uh, I, I think that's been a, that was a positive decision. I think that we think will help to help to move things along. But we got to remember, the gangs are not uh, the prime minister is not the issue, and the, I, I kept saying this in the meetings: the gangs are the issue, and so we have to focus on how we're going to make sure the multinational force has the support that it needs from from the people of Haiti and also from. Uh, from the countries that are going to be providing um, the financing and the and the people who will be on the ground trying to deal help the Haitian police force deal with the gang, um, it was a tough, it was a tense discussion over the last 48 hours. But I, I think we're we've made some progress, and I think we need to build on that progress. And now it's really up to the the political parties that have urged, been urging change to happen. It's really up to them now to to make good on their commitment, to get the transition going, and to make sure that we've got uh, some new people in place who can uh, deal with the rest of the world and also begin to deal with the challenges that people are facing at home. You touched on that emergency meeting that took place in Jamaica yesterday and that proposal for the emergency presidential council, which the prime minister, Pierre Henry, uh, agreed to. I'm wondering if you can tell us about this transition period. How will it work? Is there a timeline? Uh, how uh, will it be agreed upon? Are those details finalized just yet? The details are pretty much there because the parties really have to decide, are they going to join the group? Last night they told us that they would. They told us they would participate. They told us they would be part of the solution. Um, and uh, it was at that point that Mr. Henri said, okay, if that's agreed to, then um, when it's formed and when it's in place, because we can't have a, a vacuum, um, I will resign. And so it's really up to the parties to decide, you know, what's the timetable. Timetable should be yesterday. But it's got to go. It's got to. It's got to move quickly, because there's so much that needs to be done in dealing with this security problem and dealing with the violence that's taking place. We've got to do more, more effectively on the ground. That's going to require some assistance from the multinational force. Um, all these things need to happen, and we're we're working on each and every one of those issues. 
So as this crisis continues, the violence that we're seeing here, humanitarian crisis also at play. We're learning that there are just to over 2,900 Canadians in Haiti registered with Global Affairs. We talked about how the airport was fo forced to shut down. Do we know if it's going to reopen again? And how do we ensure the protection of these Canadians? What's the message there? Well, I mean, the message is that I think there, to be honest, I think there are more than 3,000 because many people have a Canadian passport uh, who don't tell the embassy that they're, that they're living in Haiti. Um, many of them are, um, have, you know, have a Haitian passport and a Canadian passport. But every, everyone there knows we provide regular updates to everybody that, you know, it's, it's dangerous out there. And if people are going to stay in Haiti, they've got to be uh, super careful about what they do. Um, we are working now, or the government is working, obviously, on a daily basis on looking at what, what can be done if and if. Uh, but we are also preparing for... You know what what could go wrong we're also preparing for what could go right so we we have an obligation to work hard on in both areas and that's that's exactly what we're doing at the, at the moment okay and hopefully things do move fast there truly a heartbreaking situation playing out in haiti bob ray canadian ambassador to the u.n thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today thank you it's good to be with you